right. Well, um, welcome uh, to the September 22nd, 2022 uh, meeting of the Annapolis Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, the meeting shall come to order. The commission operates pursuant to the land use article of the annotated code of the state of Maryland. Local authority uh, for the commission is derived from municipal code chapter 21, section 56. The purpose of the HPC is to prefer, preserve structures, districts that uh, have historical, cultural, archeological and ar architectural significance. Requirements for serving on the commission are detailed in chapter 21, section 806. The HPC operates pursuant to the State of Maryland Open Meetings Act and therefore no pending application shall be discussed between or among commissioners outside the public hearing to determine the dis disposition of any application. Okay, that's our first item. Um, second item on the agenda is roll call. We have Bill Williams. Say aye, if you may. Aye. Kim Finch. Aye. Bobby Collins. Aye. He serves as our vice chair. Kevin Smith. Aye. And that is who we have right now. Um, also, uh, we have John Tower, as, who serves as our staff and Jackie uh, Rouse, who is our um, wonderful uh, assistant from the uh, Office of uh, Planning and Zoning. Um, Kimberly Consoli will be listening to this uh, after the fact and uh, creating our minutes. All right. Let me go back to my agenda quickly. All right. Um, next on the agenda is other business. We have three pre-applications this evening. Uh, the first is 3 Wagner Street. So if um, Madeline can promote, uh, is Dan here or uh, who's Hi. gonna present for 3 Wagner Street? Here I am. Click, click. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm using a different computer tonight, so I'm there. All right, um, Dan, uh, you've been you understand the process. Uh, the pre-application is a um, courtesy extended to ap uh, applicants to review design concepts, and um, we are going to provide comments, but. Uh, Nothing should be taken as approval or disapproval of an eventual uh, approve, uh, application. Um, do you acknowledge that? I understand. Thank you. All right. All right. Tell us what you'd like to hear. I, um, I think we've seen this before once, right? Yeah, not, not long ago. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, I hope I'm going to share my screen. Let's see. <laughs> okay. So on the last administrative meeting, we I presented this proposal to infill this corner with a, an addition, 120 square foot addition. <clears throat> and we're going to extend this existing um, shed dormer. And I'll go through point by point the uh, comments made by the commission at the last meeting. Thank you. <clears throat> there was a re request to provide more information about the site plan and the need to remove 120 square feet of impervious um, surface and replace it with 120 square feet of pervious surface. So we'll do that with two moves. One is this existing concrete walk that skirts around the house will be removed and replaced with probably wood mulch, uh, an a pervious wood mulch walkway instead of the um, instead of the, let's see, how many square feet is that? 42 square feet. That gets us part of the way there. The rest of the way there is done by removing the existing flagstone patio portion of the, of the larger, this part of the patio is brick. 
and this part of the patio exists as flagstone. That will be removed and replaced with pervious gridded pavers, which will look like this. So I looked around for a, the, the spec, the, the code for gridded pervious pavers in Maryland. I couldn't find, uh, I looked on um, everything I could find in the critical area documentation and I, I couldn't find a, a specification for it. I did find one from Virginia Department of Environmental Quality uh, that represent that uh, recommends 20 to 50 percent open void content between pavers. So if these are 18 by 18 pavers and this is a three inch gap between them filled with aggregate topsoil and grass, coarse sand, I assume they could also be filled with uh, wood mulch, wood chips, if that's what the owner opted for. Uh, that produces a little over about 23% void area and qualifies it as pervious. So that's our solution to needing to, to compensate for this 120 square feet of new impervious area. Other comments, most of the comments were about the high dormer, which was a doghouse type dormer. And that was not well received. So our proposal is to extend the existing shed dormer in both directions. Uh, the previous, what you saw the other night, uh, 10 days ago or so, we were extending it in this direction toward number four, and there was a doghouse dormer on the other side here. We're now proposing that that sh shed dormer be extended in both directions to provide plenty of room for windows to provide light air to the third floor of the building. There was a comment about the need to distinguish the materials of new construction from the materials of old construction. And just a bit of the history of this building, it, uh, when it was built in the late 1800s, it was a box. The footprint was a, was a rectangle. And in 1913, two wings were added, mirror imaged on either side of the building. So this is actually newer than the old original part. Um, I don't know when the existing shed dormer, I couldn't find when that was added. I would say it was added before, uh, you know, before as far back as E-Tracket was in effect. So I can't find uh, electronic online documentation of when this high dormer was built. Uh, I'm guessing if I poked around in, at the permit center, I might be able to find a permit for it probably from the 1980s, but I don't know. Um, but that, when it was built, was differentiated from the stucco of the rest of the building by making it, by cladding it in um, clapboards, uh, laps, lap cedar siding. And rather than introduce a new material, a third material, our proposal is that all of what will now be the additions, the newer additions, will be clad in um, in cedar siding, horizontal lap cedar siding. There was a discussion about the the roof of the new addition. I'll go back to this. Um, Hey, Dan, can I ask you a yes. quick question? Sure. You're when you're talking about the cladding, um, if you could use your cursor and just explain what we, you were just talking about, uh, the, the, which um, facades here or, or, or faces are going to be clad with the cedar? Let me see how, how if I can. I don't know if you can pick it up graphically, uh, but 
it would be the entirety of the extended shed dormer, the high shed dormer, and the entirety of the new addition. Mm -hmm. The rest and of the building would be would remain the existing stucco cladding. Stucco. Okay. Thanks. There was discussion about the lack of slope on the roof, which made it look a whole lot like a roof deck and not a slope roof. Right. Um, there was a quarter inch per foot slope on the roof prior, and there is now three quarters of an inch per foot slope. which clearly makes it look like a roof and not a rooftop deck. Mm -hmm. These images you've seen, mm -hmm. these show that the, from almost in front of the house, you won't see any of this work until you move about 30 feet down the street, and then in the winter time, you'll get a view of the proposed additions. Um, the, the, extens the extension in both directions of the high shed dormer does not impact this view. You can't see it, either, either before or now, you can't see it. <coughs> we were asked to identify the windows that we're gonna use. The windows that were installed in the latest renovation, whenever that was, I'm assuming probably the 1980s, are all wood. They're wood double hungs. They're not clad. Uh, I don't know who makes them. They're, uh, other than the, the jam liners, um, they're all wood construction. They're double insulated glass. Uh, they have simulated divided lights and they have square sticking. So we've chosen the Marvin wood exterior double hung window, Marvin, uh, Marvin ultimate wood exterior double hung window, which will be made out of vertical grain Douglas fir inside and out. We'll have a simulated divided light. And I was not able to confirm yet whether that's acceptable, I'll leave it to you to tell me that. And it'll have the same, uh, the same Munton profile and dimension of the windows that were installed in the, in the latest uh, renovation of the house. They'll have screens and it'll probably be Marvin's bright view screen option, a very light colored, almost invisible screen. And I'll leave it up to the homeowners to choose the, the color of the hardware, but it'll have the standard. But that's on the interior, um, so. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> and those are our responses to comments from last time. Okay, thanks. Um, so maybe Dan, if you, we could just go back to the top um, and uh, yeah, I think um, I'm interested in, in comments from uh, John Tower um, or actually any clarifying questions from commissioners. All right, John, what do you think? Uh, I think that uh, Dan has worked to address the comments. And uh, I do want to say, though, I did a little uh, Sanborn uh, research on this. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm looking at the December uh, 13th, I mean, December 1913 map. And it appears to me as, as though uh, uh, the house was built uh, in well, uh, very similar to its, its current form with uh, uh, a two and a half story uh, uh, midsection uh, and then the, uh, uh, the rear uh, addition um, 
uh, being what it is today. It's, it certainly appears that way on the uh, October 1921 uh, Sanborn map, and it didn't exist uh, in the October uh, 1908 map. This is just a little bit of, of, of research. So in its, in its current form, uh, uh, with uh, the footprint of uh, the rear uh, kitchen, uh, it was it was completed uh, prior to October of 1921. So the house is over 100 years old. Um, my only my only comment um, uh, or query is, uh, uh, Dan, did you say simulated divided light SDLs? Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, if if we can, unless it's a uh, a one over one configuration. Uh, uh, Typically, the the requirement is is for uh, true divided light as opposed to uh, simulated divided light. Okay. Um, other otherwise, I I think that uh, uh, this will have minimal impact on uh, the streetscape, uh, and uh, I think these uh, these additions, although they uh, certainly appear uh, boxy. Um, and uh, utilitarian uh, are easily differentiated from the original structure. So I, I consider that a plus. Okay. Yeah, several issues to follow up on there. Um, the, the massing is something I think we need to continue talking about a little bit, um, but I would like to establish uh, that this is a, con a contributing structure um, from its from its period of significance from before 1921, and apparently in this form with this rear addition. Uh, John, did I hear you correctly yeah. on that? Yeah. Frequently, we find additions that have been added in the 40s and 50s, and they are not significant. But this is this whole structure was in place in 1921. And I assume the deck on the lower the, it probably was reconstructed at some point, but it's the mass that we're talking about. All right, so I, I want to talk about that. And I, I'm interested in the thoughts about massing of the dormer itself too, again. And um, and then finally, I think we just need to clarify on, on the window of specifications. So other commissioners, what, what are your thoughts? Tim, if I may. Of course. A um, couple things, Dan. And, uh, as, as far as the windows are concerned, and my concern, Tim, is, is if he goes to a true divided light, the muttons are going to be a lot wider than the historic ones that are there. If he uses a simulated, he may be able to still use the narrow, but he would need to put the um, insulated dividers behind each one to make it look like a true divided. And those insulated bars, which we seem to forget from time to time, need to be colored in some way other than silver. Because that becomes rather apparent on those. So I don't know if you have a spacer bar between your muttons. It, to me, it doesn't look like it in that one little detail. Uh, okay, yeah, there is. Looks like there is. And in that detail, it shows it as a dark black. So from any distance, that's going to look like a true divided. And it's, again, that's just to keep those mutton bars from getting so wide, they start looking like a chunk of wood as opposed to a detail. Yeah, that's just a suggestion there. Now, I, to, I'll quickly follow up on that. Um, this type of window has been approved um, on non, you know, on the on buildings that aren't of immense significance. Um, this is a fairly generic. It's, it's it has significance, but it is not a major street front or anything like. And this type of um, window has been approved um, with the stipulation that the interior spacers are not silver. Mm -hmm. So that has been approved before. So um, I think, Dan, if you can <clears throat> confirm that th there are spacers between the, the, the windows and, um, and there won't be 
uh, aluminum, bare aluminum. Okay. Now, one other item. Actually, I actually have two more items. Uh, the pervious pavers you're looking at, Dan? Yeah. I don't think other than saying the grid is appropriate or not, as far as we're concerned, please, Tim, smack me down if I'm not correct on that. You can comment on anything you want, but, but um, percentages aren't our thing, but materials, the quality mm -hmm. of the material is important. Well, as, as far as the stormwater management percentages and all, that's not us. That would be um, planning, zoning, stormwater, as far as getting your percentages and if they will accept them. That's correct. It's, and, it's actually Department of Public Works. Thank you. Right. And then last is we had talked about the gap between the two residences where your um, shed roof came against the other building. Is right. that Thank you. you were working out? Yes, uh, the neighbors are agreeable to that. To, okay. to, having, to having the high shed dormer extend uh, all the way to their, to make, making the, the end wall of their dormer essentially a, a common wall, party wall. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that wasn't forgotten. I'll go back to sleep now. Um, no, can, no. Can we talk a little more about uh, the pavers. So your your concern is the quality of the pavers themselves. As far as HPC would be concerned, would be the appearance, the appropriateness to the historic building. Are there guidelines uh, for that? I actually don't know. Yes, uh, um, they they tend to have to do with the material. Um, and the color to be consistent that generally refers to the streetscape, not the, the gardens. Um, they, they should not be of any um, artificial material. So you just need to tell us these, you, we call them pavers, I assume they're concrete or aggregate. Um, could be blue stone, could be some other- Blue stone. stone. Would, would so concrete? Uh, be considered a natural or an unnatural material? That's a man-made product. Okay. Well, so we want we want stone, it sounds like. Um, from a guideline point of view, what we're really looking at is consistency with the what, it, what was there before and what might be in neighboring gardens, um, uh, concrete pavers, um, generally are not used. Um, if you want to propose them, we can we can talk more about that. So no, what, what's your thought right? What's your thought right now? Right what now. the owner what what does your owner want? I would say we'll probably be proposing blue stuff. That be this right is, on target. Yeah, this is John. I agree with Dan on that. It would be a natural. Hey, this is Jackie. I had so can I have a question about um, Dan, are you are you proposing this because of um, critical area lot coverage? Yes. Okay, I I don't know that we you know we're going to have to review whether or not it's acceptable under our critical area standards. And I I don't think you and I have talked about this, but um, Kim Burke has taken over Cynthia's job to start main lead person on critical areas. So I think we're gonna to have to look at that because in the past, the critical area commission in Maryland has not accepted permeable pavers to meet critical area requirements. They did many years ago, but then they stopped doing that. So okay. we're gonna to have, to, to have to take a look at that from a critical area point of view also. Yeah. Yes. And that brings up the obvious point that um, before we get to the eventual um, final application, that uh, uh, approval will be need, need to be in place. Uh, Jackie, mm -hmm. as far as permeable bit, will be pavers, that I believe the issue with them is they had a habit of clogging over the time periods, which is why they weren't acceptable. They weren't acceptable, but I don't think that they've added them back in as. I mean, I think they eventually just said, no, you can't count them. You can wow. do them as sort of like a bonus thing, but um, you can't count. Them. That's my okay. understanding. But we, I'm I happy understand. to discuss it with Kim. But um, Jackie, what I'm going towards is what Dan is proposing is, and Dan, please correct me. 
is he plans to put a pattern of non-permeable pavers down, but leave enough space between them to meet the permeable, permeable area requirements. I see that on the drawing, the three okay. inch pit, but I, I, and I, and I thought about that before I spoke, but I'm okay. not sure that that makes them any more acceptable because I think what they used to put in the voids was gravel or something. So um, we have to, we'll have to get an opinion from critical yeah. areas on this. Yeah. They did use gravel bet between the driving right. and the concrete ones. That's and true. I'm not sure that the, the, the voids filled with, um, whatever they're filled with in the in this case um wood chips or whatever are any more acceptable to the critical area commission hmm. well that, that's this is a great discussion i think it's great yeah. that all of yeah. us understand yeah. it um, um, but right now if i understand what dan's asking for is blue stone um pavers with uh, the gaps that we see here what they're filled with is their choice and whether that is permeable or not permeable, we know the bluestone is not permeable. Mm -hmm. or, um, but I guess what you're saying is what is in between them may or may not qualify, or and that can be. No, I'm saying the whole idea of counting the whole area where you have gridded pavers with gaps between them in the past, uh, the critical uh, area commission has not uh, accepted that. It doesn't, you know. So, so. Oh, I was just counting the gaps between as the. Pervious. No, that, that was, it, that was, it was the whole the whole concept. So oh, okay, all right. Well, it's good to know. Yeah, we will. But we're happy to revisit that. I mean, you know, um, happy to happy to have that conversation. Just what we it should yeah. be become a known fact. Okay, thank you. But from our point of view, to bring that to a little, the bluestone pavers here would be completely mm -hmm. consistent, and pretty much anything um, in the gaps would be also, I believe, feasible. Commissioners, you head nods. Okay. Well, that's the paving. Um... So Tim, can we have a similar conversation about the party wall? It's of not course. our anything. <laughs> it's yeah. not our purview, but by pushing that shed dormer all the way to the to the next building, um, you're we're gonna need a clear approval from the building department that that qualifies as a party wall that'll um, be acceptable. Yeah. And it, is that a party wall there or is it just two separate walls that are, have, have you done that level of investigation? Sometimes the, it turns out that there's a some kind of gap between the buildings that you can't really see and it's not really a party wall. I don't, I don't know that, no. Okay. But anything so, anything less than five feet from the neighboring building has the same expectations. So right. that's a I'm going to need that. We would need that approval as HPC to approve yeah. the design. Yeah. yeah, right. That's a conversation that um, Dan should have then with the um, with Ryan Bromley. I, I think maybe the fire marshal's office for that. And the fire marshals, they're yeah. different, but but there are often you can well you can. There are times when they you just do a fire rated wall there, you know. Um, if yeah. the, it, I mean, there you know, we have number. It happens all over the place that we have buildings that butt up against each other, and I think it, it probably has to do with firewall separation. But Dan yeah. should follow up. That might be problematic. Um, could, could I ask this question, Dan? Is the building sprinkled? Is there a sprinkler system? Is the house sprinkled? Okay. Oh, all right. Um, well, this level of um, renovation requires sprinkling. I, again, we're getting outside of our sandbox a little right. bit, but I do believe that at some point a building needs to become sprinkled. Um, right. So, Dan, one thing you might want to do is to set up a separate pre-application meeting that would be attended by the fire marshal's office and the um, um, building inspector. I think you, you've done those before on other projects. Yeah, sure. Probably would be a good idea to do that then. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then, um, then you, you know, sometime before your fifth appearance here with the, your fifth <laughs> pre-application meeting on this. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, we're actually happy. I, uh, this is kind of a different thing that we end up talking um, about things that aren't in a sandbox, but I hope it's helpful to the applicant to understand that. Um, I think it's good for the process that we make it clear that, you know, because we've had not in the, we've talk, talked about this before in the past where the projects come to you all for pre-applications and we haven't, haven't looked at them from either the zoning yeah. point of view. Now, Dan and I did do that with this project. Yeah. But I think it's good that you have more input so that applicants are not under the illusion that, you know, and the illusions about the project. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, I just got a text from Leslie uh, Xavier is, um, unfortunately her flight was canceled. Um, yeah. So she will not be able to attend tonight. Um, okay. Um, I, I did have one or two other clarifying questions for Dan. Um, the, we are uh, covering up um, existing windows. And I think we mentioned this on the second floor, there are two windows that are being covered up by the um, new addition. That, that's it, I think. Um, we, we would like to see the nature of those windows uh, and make sure they are, if they are historic, in, in meaning original. Um, yeah, I, I went to the site a couple of days ago and examined and photographed, uh, took notes on those windows. They're they're not old. They were put in. Uh, they're, they're they may be twenty years old, but I don't think they are. Okay. Um, they are all wood, double hungs, um, insulated, uh, double insulated glazing. Uh, square profile sticking uh, yeah, on the interior, uh, OG on the outside, I believe. So there, I don't know who makes them. I couldn't find a, a stamp yeah. on the glass. I don't know the manufacturer. That's okay. We're, I guess my, my point is if, if we're covering up, um, we're covering up a, a section of the, of the facade here on the rear that the facade is historic. If the windows were historic, we would be concerned. Okay. Um, and we would, we've, we have, because those would disappear. Um, we have been able to agree with that. If you were to take a historic window and move it to the new facade that, so what I'm hearing you say, that's not the case here. These are not historic windows. We don't need to take these existing historic artifacts and move them. That's right. Okay, great. And you're removing one window on the first floor on the, to the left there, that, again, uh, if that window is historic, we would need to understand if, if, it, if it is or is not historic. We're removing the two windows on the second floor. Um, I'm going, I guess, from the, there's the ground floor, then the first floor on the far left of, of the, it's not the new addition, but in the new rendering, a window disappears. Oh, you're this right here? I'm looking for your cursor. Oh. Yeah, uh, keep going. That's oh, an no, no, on, the, on the rear, on the rear. On the rear. There's oh, three windows there, and now there's two windows. Oh, I missed it. That's that's a, an error in the model. Dan, <laughs> back where you had your cursor on the side, if you go yes. up one, you're missing a window there, too. Uh, correct. No, no, this is a, this is a new window. Okay. Well, you've added a window then. Okay. Correct. Yes. So this is the, the window in the bedroom yeah. now that's being removed and a new and window, window will be added in the bedroom right here. Okay. And so that's a new penetration into historic fabric, quote unquote. Right? Yes. Also an important fact to just document um, how that will be detailed. So, so two, two or three things came up now. Or, um, so, so you're not on the rear, you're not removing a window and on the side here, it looks like the north facing side, you're adding a window. So the details of, of that and um, again, we have we have approved um, new windows in historic fabric, but we just need to note that it's occurring. Okay. Um, I, I, I do have a concern. Um, actually, 
with the, the differentiation between the two buildings, the slope of the, the new dormer and the scale of it and the size of those windows is quite different than the last time I think we saw this, right? Yes. I think you were responding. Um, from a scale point of view, uh, it, it, um, it looks, the, the slope looks almost flat again. Maybe it's just the rendering. Um, but the, the mass and bulk of the new addition, which is quite different than last time we saw is quite large. Um, I think you did understand that we wanted, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that it, the bulk point of view looks a lot different than last time to me. Um, so I'm, I'm referring to um, B, B, B8 and B6, which is the scale of, of the new uh, dormer is quite large and maybe overwhelming the roof <laughs> and the existing building a little bit. Is there a way to break the mass up? We can break the mass up by, instead of extending the existing high shed dormer in both directions, we'll extend it in the direction of number four uh, Wagner Street. And then instead of extending it in the direction in the other direction toward the gable end, we can make that a separate shed dormer. That's what we had before, though, that we didn't like, Tim. What, was it two dormers or one? It was, it was it a was new, two. it was, they extended the roof and then there was a separate dormer and we, and it, we don't want new dormers. So this was his, this was his solution to try and solve that yeah. problem. Yeah, I apologize. I went back and I could not find my minutes from it. Um, so if, if you did exactly what we asked, I apologize. Yeah, yeah that's but the thing, yeah. The end result, I'm not sure I'm, okay. Um, I just uh, then uh, that I would be interested in the slope of that roof. Is it matching the next door neighbor? Is that what's going on? Uh, yes, that it will. Whatever the, I haven't been up on there on the roof to take measurements and get that slope. I don't know what it is. It's a, it's a shallow pitch, but I don't know what it is. But yes, this this slope of this dormer will maintain the, the existing slope, the existing shed dormer slope and be extended. Uh, if extending it toward the gable end is just too, too big an addition and too bulky and uh, yeah. isn't going to work, then uh, our option then really becomes skylights as I see it. Do you agree? I, uh, yes, I, yeah. Okay. I, I do agree with that. And the size and scale of those two windows there. Again, we're not trying to design for you. You're the architect. Um, okay, understood. If I understood you last time, Dan, when we were talking about the gable, you had put the the gable there and we're willing to talk about skylights that, if I understood correctly, the, the purpose of that area there was to get light in. Light and air, yes. Okay, so it isn't so much as to have walking around room inside, but to get to get light in. Uh, it, it would certainly be nice to have a little more headroom up there, uh, but if that's not if that's not going to work, it's it's not the most important uh, goal of that. The most important goal is light and air. Okay. Okay, so I'm um, hearing that um, possibly some more articulation of this mass might be possible. Yes. Uh, um, and maybe even, um, we talked about the size of those two windows to the right. Also, um, if you had to drop the, increase the roof slope, um, those, those windows might become a little bit smaller, which is the, the trade-off. But in general, um, I can wrap up, I think. Any, any other uh, comments before I wrap up? 
-hmm. All right. Um, the uh, presentation for, is it eight Wagner Street, right? Three. Three, thanks. <laughs> I never remember the numbers. Um, uh, is, uh, it appears to be a feasible proposal. Um, the commissioners discussed um, this site plan, which had to do with uh, pervious and impervious surfaces. The recommendation was that any materials used should be compliant with the guidelines and the applicant will be proposing uh, bluestone pavers in the new area. Um, the material uh, on the addition, the new additions will be uh, cedar siding, which differentiates it from the stucco, uh, existing stucco, uh, which is again, compliant with our guidelines. Um, there was a discussion of the, uh, the new windows that are being installed and the proposed um, specification, which are, um, they're, they're not single divided light, but they are, um, they're not true divided light, they're single divided light with spacers between the uh, muttons that um, are not uh, aluminum in color or bright in color. And finally, we, um, I discussed, I think that was it. Well, the final, I already, I think I already summarized the roof, roof shapes, correct? Okay. Did I miss anything, commissioners? Okay. Well, thanks, Dan. Um, we look forward to a full application in the near future. Okay, thank you. We'll be, we'll be back. Okay, now I have to go back here. All right, back to my agenda. Um, next on the agenda is 5A and 5B Compromise Street. Oh, there we are. That was quite an adventure, <laughs> your, your uh, last submission. Well, thank you for your commentary, Gary. <laughs> um, so um, this is the pre-application for uh, 5A and 5B Compromise Street. Um, so Gary, uh, this is a policy of the commission to extend to applicants. Um, for design review uh, and nothing said this evening should be uh, construed as approval or disapproval. So do you acknowledge that? I acknowledge that, yes. Thanks. All right, well, tell us what you'd like us to know. And I also have to introduce the fact, I think you were aware um, from John's um, email to you, there are zoning issues here um, that may preclude uh, our review of it eventually. So until those zoning issues are handled, we won't be seeing you in a final application. I think do you do understand that, correct? I understand that. And of course, you've I'm sure received this letter from Alan Hyatt. Um, I'm not sure that Tim has, has seen that. I, I don't know what yeah. you're talking about, Gary. Right. Oh, all right. It was a letter uh, from Alan Hyatt to Jackie Rouse. And essentially it says that uh, there is a path to up to be able to uh, change the zoning restrictions so that the- uh, Well, I just, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but that's interesting. <laughs> but I, I, this is just a sequencing thing that would all take place. Um, we're happy to talk about the design aspects of this. Um, but if, it, 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 so uh, those will all need to take place before your eventual right, approval. I, yeah, the, the, the path of, there's, I recall even <clears throat> about a hundred years ago when I was on the planning commission, there was always a question of sequence when something came before the commission that also needed zoning 
uh, requirements. This is one of the reasons why we now have pre-apps. Uh, it's in order to be able to get a project to move along in a logical sequence. The first step, because it is a pre-app, to find out if it is worth pursuing the project, that always came first. If the project was not feasible at HPC, then there would be no reason to pursue the zoning. So the reason we're here at the pre-app is to find out if the project is feasible. If it is, then we will go ahead with doing the that's, zoning. That, yeah, that's, that's fair, Guy, I, I get it. Why would you spend the time um, pursuing it from a design point of view if it's not gonna fly from a design point of view? In the last few years though, in my 12 years, <laughs> if it wasn't feasible from a zoning point of view, there was no point so it's a chicken and the egg thing. So I get what you're saying, but we're happy to happy to talk to you tonight and 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 surface any design issues from a guideline point of view. So. And, and Tim, I would this is Jackie. I would just like to clarify that yes, we did receive a letter from Mr. Hyatt where he has proposed what he feels may be a path to okay, great amending the project. But there's been no agreement on what that is. There's been no review at all of prior approval or whether or not it's even feasible from a zoning point of view to do that's this. That's fine. Uh, yeah, but we're happy, we're happy to help. Um, right. We just don't want to spin wheels if, uh, right. so we, that's enough, I, I, I agree. So Gary, I get your point. And okay. so tell us what you'd like to know about your design um, okay. proposal. Well, uh, I presume that everybody has a package and that the, the various photographs and drawings that we submitted have been available and reviewed they by have, commissioners. They have, they oh. have, have. Can you share your screen to help us through that or? Uh, no, we're not quite there. Yeah, I don't have that capability right now. I mean, yeah, I have, yeah. Do you, can, can I get a Madeline to put it on the screen or no? If I had the files or documents, I'd be happy to share them. Um, if you wanted to really quick email them to me, I could give you yeah. my email. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the process the process for a while now has... Um, yeah, we're new at it, so... Yeah. Um, what's your email? M K H O R R E L L at annapolis.gov. Okay. Let me make sure I got it. M K H O R R E L L at annapolis.gov. That's that's the e one. E L L. As I said at the outset, I can't wait till we can sit down and pass paper, paper back or across the table. I don't know why. I think this is thrilling. Uh, this is, uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, the way this works for your future references before a pre-app, even with pre-apps, um, we would ask you to several days, if not a week in advance um, to provide electronic drawings then to us, which we have. Okay. Um, and then during the meeting, um, you would share them with us. Uh, so we, we are not looking at, you know, like our screens. We, right. we cannot print drawings out. Oh, right. Okay, but we, well, let, uh, never mind. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a new world for uh, Fourth Street Design Studio. Okay. I just forwarded them to Madeline. Oh, you did? Mm hmm All right. Because John had forwarded them to me a little while ago. I hadn't seen them either. Yeah. So, oh and no, again, I, those okay are not you... the right ones. I forwarded a different ones. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's another important fact that um, right. when the applicant or the pre applicant, again, this is a relatively informal process, but yeah. the pre applicant um, presents, we are getting the most current um, right. drawings and we don't get into a version control problem. Right. Right. Yeah, we're trying to keep uh, keep things simple. Um, quite frankly, the reason that we are here as mm -hmm. a pre-app is the first thing we want to find out 
is if the concept of using the front yard for decks for the two units mm -hmm. feasible thing or not. And then if that is feasible, then we have some alternate designs for the deck themselves. And uh, so anyway. The well, that's a good way, good place to start actually. Um, regardless of the drawings, I think we've all looked at, I hope, I assume everyone, we understand and if, I, if I'm reading the drawings correctly, there are two different potential alternatives. That's um, so the idea of a terrace or a, a porch or a deck, a deck. Um, is, is something to talk about on this particular streetscape. Um, and it's in front of two of the units, correct? That's correct. And, yeah. they're, and they're compatible. Um, I think by way of introduction, most of the commissioners weren't alive when this was built, but I am, I was. Uh, <laughs> this, is this is a significant um, um, building in significant development all along Compromise Street. So um, John, maybe before we get the drawings up and see that, um, I think if we've all looked at them, we understand that we're proposing two decks, two different alternative designs for two decks in front of new construction from 2005, 2000, 2000? 2000. 2000. The, 2000. The, uh, the buildings were, were done and occupied in 2000. Okay. Um, and um, it's on a, it's on, it replaced, it doesn't matter what it replaced and it went through a series of um, design reviews, but it's been in place for 22 years. Yes. Harriet, yeah. some of your finest work. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, it, it, it happened to occur to me, and besides Jackie, who's been playing this game for a long time, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I started before uh, started coming before the commission very in the very early days in uh, late 60s, early 70s. So this could be my 50th anniversary. Jackie isn't far behind me. Oh my. <laughs> okay. Um, I have the documents whenever you guys are ready for me to share. All right, great. If you could start sharing and then uh, with that kind of introduction from both sides here, Gary, uh, why don't you walk us? Oh, okay. Yeah, this- As, as Madeline shares her screen, um, we can scan to the drawings. Um, yeah, that's- There we go. There you go, okay. Yeah, that's a, a view of the units that are facing Compromise Street. Uh, the fourth unit is more or less facing the, uh, same, the other street and has a different facade. Um, yeah, the concept here is to uh, provide the new decks in front of the two units behind the white car. Uh, the uh, access to the decks. Yeah, that would go through the, yeah, that's picture one. Go to picture two. Picture number two. That's a uh, a closer view of the front facades and. Uh, shows the lawn and the landscaping. Uh, I might, uh, <clears throat> might add that the idea here is to keep the, the reason why we, have, why we have the two alternates is that they're at different heights. And the concept is to provide the deck and then put some landscaping in front of it. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> anyway, the decks will provide the opportunities for the Malgrams and the Depews to have an open air exterior seating area with a view of the neighborhood as opposed to the small confined patios at the rear of their homes. Uh, the patios at the, in the rear also in the summer because of the Southwest exposure um, are uh, quite hot. The, uh, the decks here in the front would uh, actually be 
more open and uh, probably a more comfortable space. Uh, but essentially is, if we want to go to the drawings. Yeah. Go through. Yeah, that's a good view. Those are good views. Yeah. yeah the, uh, <clears throat> what's called unit number three and unit number four are the two units for the Depews and uh, the Margrams. And uh, you can see the, the one large tree uh, does impact the location of the, uh, of the deck in front of the Depews residence. Uh, go to the next drawing. Yeah, this interior views of the two units. Uh, the, and of course, and the front steps. Uh, go to the next drawing. Yeah, that's the architectural drawing from uh, when the uh, project was approved. I think that the date we're on looking at the, we're looking at the two units to the left here, correct? Yeah, the two correct. units to the left. Okay, and that's the entire complex. So, and go to the next one. Okay, that's the first scheme, and. That would be four risers down from the front entry porch. And the concept there is to have the units be lower so that they have less impact on the front elevation. And because they are uh, further out, the, uh, the shapes are intended to be uh, somewhat abstract and uh, provide some seating area, uh, perhaps uh, a dining table, an umbrella, that sort of thing. Go to the next drawing. That would be the elevation, mm -hmm. those, draw, those decks. And go to the next drawing. That would be yeah. a plan. Yeah. That, yeah, go to the, go to the plan first. Pack up. Is that yeah. back one? Pack up one. There we go. There we are. That is showing the decks closer in, but uh, higher. So there are only two risers down, and they become more more prominent part of the front facade. And you can go to the last drawing. Sorry. Yeah, and that would be the result there. And then we would have to landscape in front of those so that the area under the decks would be uh, screened. Okay. Great. Okay. That's. Essential. I think we understand. Um, so, to by the discussion, we have um, if commissioners um, and, and John can express a well, perhaps uh, before we details. Do, I, I, I think that uh, uh, the owners may have some comments of oh, okay. why they I'm would sorry. have these. Uh, Doug, would you see if we can get Doug on the screen? He's right there. Uh, I'm here. I'm here. Oh. Yeah, well, the, as, as uh, Gary has said, the, the, um, the front of the house in the afternoon is in the shade. In addition, we have um, the, the trees in the front to provide shade, but all of the activity in Annapolis is happening in the front. We have a view of the, the, the streetscape, uh, as well as the, the activities in the, in the harbor area and the Naval Academy. Um, in the back, of course, as he said, is they're, they're enclosed. They're uh, facing in a direction that makes them really un, not just um, uncomfortable, they're unusable uh, in, in the summer months. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a, a way for us to have some uh, exterior access. 
number one. Number two, the if one was to walk around Annapolis, one would find more houses with some kind of a front porch than not. And, you know, this would not be inconsistent with what we see in, in many other parts of Annapolis. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, yep, and we have a whole um, guideline paragraph called stoops and porches, B12. So we got that. This is um, this is Frank Depew. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm 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 the only original owner that's still there. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously love love the work that Gary did and and, and the home. Um, anecdotally, I would just say that we've lived there for 22 years, and in many years, you know, spent you know most of our year there. And uh, we've probably used our back patio five times in 22 years. Um, it's just not really conducive to a place to sit down and enjoy um, because of the reason that Doug, Doug mentioned. And mostly it's just a path to, for us to be able to take the trash out, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, being able to do, do, do something here um, in this vein, uh, I think would... Uh, would help our enjoyment of the home, uh, particularly to be outside more uh, and enjoy the view that we have. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. I would like to point one other thing out that um, just so that there's no, um, just everyone's on the same page. Um, prior to Frank and, and, and I talking about uh, doing something like this to the front of the house, um, we had discussions with our other two neighbors um, and they were in full support of it. Um, we have had subsequent, I have had subsequent conversations with the two neighbors um, since the, the concern on the uh, zoning issue came up recently. And first of all, for the four of us, it's, surprising and a little bit confusing. Um, but more importantly, we all want to see it. Um, we, are, we are working in, in unison to see if we can get this changed. So this is something that we've, this is not Frank and I coming and doing, making this proposition without having done some further discussion with our neighbors to ensure that their support would be granted. Um, now it's a function of getting um, a path to getting this done that, that Mr. Hyatt is going to be working through and hopefully yeah. that can work and you know, we'll see. Yeah. I hear what you're saying, it's, it's always important um, and in your eventual applications to, from a, again, a design point of view we are only looking at our guidelines, not whether it's zoning approved or not, but it will be helpful in, in your eventual application to have your neighbors say, we completely are okay with, um, or we, we have no opposition. They have the right to oppose this in a public meeting if they want to, but that would only be from our design guidelines. It would not be from a uh, zoning uh, issue. So I'm just trying to reiterate that, um, we're only looking at our uh, the, the design issues here, not not um, ability to build. Period, in the first place. Yeah, we understand. Okay, great. All right. Okay. Um, that being said, from a there are several things that have been brought up. Uh, there's two different concepts um, on the table, so I'd be interested to hear from um, John and commissioners of preference of one or the other in terms of feasibility not you know, in terms of uh, the guidelines. Um, and, and then I have a few questions about more details about materials and those things. So, um, so John, uh, can you give us your opinion uh, in terms of feasibility? Well, uh, this certainly appears to be feasible if the, uh, if the zoning issues can be worked out. Right. Um, zoning it's, issues and stuff. It's, Nice to see, right, zoning issues aside, it's nice to see a continuation of design from the original designer 
architect. And Agreed. Uh, I'm hoping that the detail on uh, the railing uh, will match the detail on uh, the second floor uh, railing. Um, and uh, I, I don't know how all of the details are uh, are going to uh, work for uh, the, the structural portion um, because uh, those really are uh, defining points. There, there's no, there's no part of the existing porch, uh, uh, you know, post, uh, capital, uh, railing uh, that isn't finely detailed um, in uh, a harmonious way uh, uh, with the other units. So uh, I'm hoping that you're, you're planning to keep that uh, that theme consistent. Um, in terms of uh, uh, its impact on, on the buildings, it's a defining feature. It's a new defining feature. Um, but uh, this, is, uh, this is newer building, um, you know, a little over 20 years old. Uh, as, I, as I said, I've, considered, I've always considered this very, very fine work. Um, and uh, uh, there's a balance here, um, and uh, it's it's a change that I think could be supported by guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, just for the record, John, this is not a contributing building in the historic right. district, right? Yeah. So it's so it, I, our standards there for are we're not on, at the same level of um, of uh, uh, strict review. So right. Well, it, put it this way, uh, it doesn't violate any uh, government. Right, it's, it's, it's not a contributing building. I just want right. to put that, yeah. that's part of the um, standard. You know, uh, uh, I, was, I was skeptical, but uh, uh, Gary, you're such, you're such a good designer. You and, and uh, Pete have, have made it look good. And yeah. um, I, you know, I want to stop before I, I, uh, I say too much, but <laughs> it's... Uh, it's it's your usual it's your usual good work and right. uh, I think uh, it it would not detract from uh, the streetscape. Um, right. it's, now, let me say this because I'm a little bit puzzled. I was trying to think of a uh, a front porch that was also a deck, and I can't think of an example. So this is this is in a category. Uh, uh, somewhat of its own. However, you do have the covered uh, uh, entry and the second floor porch, so it it works uh, it works in unison with that. Um, mm -hmm. But I'd be interested if anyone could think of uh, uh, a a similar uh, situation. Uh, or configuration in the historic district. I just couldn't think on of a it. On a residential building. Yeah, on a residential building. Yeah. I think one. All right, it looks like Frank, uh, yeah, I think you're one of the property owners. Do you have a question or a comment? Yeah, because right, right, yeah. right, right now, right now, right now we're in the feedback portion. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, but, but I'm happy to take your input. Yeah, yeah. well, it, it, it's, it's, it's just reassurance. So uh, you know, he had mentioned about the construction and the details and everything. We've already rebuilt that front whole front thing two or three times, <laughs> and and we're making it perfect to match what was such a wonderful design. So so okay. Doug and I would never do anything with new construction that didn't completely follow that and 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 follow Gary's Gary's lead. Nice so, to hear. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, that's great. Um, thanks. Um, other commissioner. So again, John, do you have an opinion? Uh, there are two. The one that we're looking at right now on the screen is kind of creates a plane, um, which it looks like it's consistent with the facade. The other one drops it down. I'm, I'm kind of leading the witness here. The other design, <laughs> um, Madeline, if you step back maybe two or three. Uh, I just want us to focus on these two alternatives. One more back the other way, Melon, that one. So I think th this is gonna be important for us to think about um, 
again, we're looking at a lenient review here, and this is more or less, we're getting a little bit into the weeds in design, but, um, and also this one, I believe is asymmetrical or it's not rectangular. Or the other one is rectangular. Right, this one, this one comes to a point. Um, this one comes to a point. And I just wanted the commissioners to understand that these are quite different. And I think we should provide feedback to the applicant as to which would be more consistent with guidelines. And the, the, the guidelines we're looking at here have to do with um, basically, this is an addition. Um, so scale and massing of an addition. Um, and also has to do with stoops and porches, which are exist. So I, I wanted to get some feedback to the applicant as to um, plan A, which is the lower one, which is angular, or the upper one, which is more in the plane of the facade <laughs> and yeah. rectangular. So, actually, if I might interject some explanation, the the reason for the triangular shape is uh, that the the unit to let's see if you're facing the units it would be the unit to the right has a tree in front of it and excellent and in order to not have a great impact on the tree that's why the, the side of the deck was designed at an angle all right well that's important because tree removal is another point i wrote down here oh no no we, well actually <laughs> the uh if you knew the history of the project, the uh, tree that is uh, on uh, St. Mary Street, uh, that we made a big deal of that, of how to be able to build the building as close to the tree as we could. And that was a great deal of effort that went into preserving that tree. Hey, uh, hey Frank, your hand is still up. Do you want to talk or you're walking? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, anyway. Uh, if if uh, the major difference here, really between the two decks, is the height of the deck. Exactly, I, I agree with you. Relation to I'd like us to focus the on part itself. Uh, the triangular shape is uh, could very easily become rectangular. Uh, I don't think that's the issue. It's it's more a question of uh, the impact of the decks on the facade of the structure. Oh, I might also add that uh, just uh, to to literally to honor my father, Urban G. Schwerzler, who is a fine architect, uh, was with me at my studio during the design process with uh, John Pilly. And uh, he is primarily responsible for the details of the building. Uh, I did the massing and the, the the general shape of things, but uh, uh, his Beaux Arts training from the 1920s and 30s, I think, clearly came through in the fine details that uh, he provided for the structures. Yeah, I that's I I honor that. That's I and it, it's evident. So thanks for Good bringing time. that up. All right. So other commissioners. Um, Thoughts on the two alternatives of the, um, the well, the concept in general, and um, the two alternatives. I'll jump in. Um, I like I like the design very much. I think it's very much as we've all said in keeping with the original design. Um, of the two designs, personally, I prefer the one that has the straight lines, the height, the higher height, and does not go into the, the triangle. I think the, the straight linear look of, of that look is more in keeping with the current lines of the building. Um, I think because the building does have some height, the, the peaked roofs um, and the chimneys, I think it can handle that, that higher height that, that has it um, it looks like the, the lower one, the railing is right below the window line and the higher one, the, the, the railing is into the window a little bit, but I don't think that's a problem. I actually went down and, and kind of walked to the street there to try and get a sense of, of the scale of everything. Um, 
which is hard to get from drawings and just from where I was without actually physically going up to the building, I didn't want to trespass. Um, I, I get the sense that it's it's not coming out that far from the building. And so um, I, I think it can just the, the, the sense that I got from both standing there and looking at the design, I think the height of it and the, the linear, linearness of the one design to me is a better fit for, for the building. Okay. Um, thanks, Bobby. Um, other commissioners' comments, or, or John? Yes. Well, I just I just want to say uh, the the forms in uh, uh, the building are traditional, and uh, the uh, the rectilinear uh, deck is more traditional than uh, uh, the deck with the diagonals uh, coming to a point. Um, and in terms of height. Uh, boy, I think uh, I think either either is uh, uh, is a good fit, but uh, I preferred the higher one. Uh, it just it just seemed to to fit the building uh, better, and it seemed more like a primary space rather than a space that was uh, secondary. It's closer to the actual living space. Okay, Kevin or Kim. Bill? Tim, if I may, um, I'm going to basically reiterate what's already been said. I okay. prefer the rectilinear um, porches. Uh, looking at this, I know you said you're going to do plannings along the front to hide the underneath. Yeah. I would suggest considering actually doing some sort of fixed screening down there because the plants may not always be there. Um, I don't know how that affects what's behind this as far as the building itself is concerned. I don't remember if we have any um, lights into the lower section of those buildings. Uh, generally, I think it's a great idea to get activity there on that side of the street. I walk that yeah. side all the time. And basically, these are very formal structures, as you know, but it seems like there's nobody ever there. <laughs> People drive into their garage underneath and disappear inside. And it'd be great to see people out there. Uh, yeah. Now, I will say we have no control over that. I don't believe, Tim, but- No, we can't tell people- Where we have furniture issues. Um, nope. This is residential though, so. This is all residential. That's, that's good. I, I think I think it could be an improvement. All right. Thank and you. what I'm going to say right now has nothing to do with this project, but I want to congratulate you on saving that tree. I remember watching the digging around it and the air spading and everything else you did on that tree. Oh, yeah. I would have sworn within five years that tree was going to die anyway because it looked like it had been stripped out, all and shoved back in the hole. You did an amazing job on that. And Tom Smith still talks about that tree. So it, as well, we all know, I mean, that was a really, it was a really great collaborative ep effort with Mr. Pilly on the commitment to saving that tree and not a, a leaf on its little head will be harmed with this project, correct? Correct. Yes. <laughs> because Tom will be watching this. Well, John Pilly deserves a lot of credit for making this project happen. It was uh, not an easy one to build. That's true. Thanks, my assistant is bringing in my power. <laughs> All right. Um, Thank you. Commissioners. Anybody um, else? All right. Um, I'd just like to um, summarize a little bit. Um, The, um, the designs being presented have, have to do with a, um, an addition to the front of an existing building um, on Compromise Street. Uh, two designs have been presented, uh, one which is 
rectilinear in nature and at only two steps down from the existing front porch. And then the other is a little bit different and uh, lower design. Um, the commissioners, um, based on the consistency with the existing building, ex express a preference for the higher design, more rectilinear. Um, and uh, that that's um, consistent with um, our guidelines, which have to do with um, massing of additions and not, a new addition not competing, I think, with with an existing building, and that's um, B6. Um, another uh, guideline is B12, which has to do with stoops and porches. And I also think that uh, the the more rectilinear, higher uh, design reads more as a, um, a porch as opposed to if you layer it down towards the grass, it looks a bit more like a deck. So I think, again, we're looking at the guideline having to do with being consistent with B12. Uh, we would look for more detail on rail design um, and um, possible screening underneath the, the, the posts, between the posts in the final application. Um, there's no additional tree removal involved in this application as, I, as we understand it. Um, the, uh, therefore, I think the design is feasible. It is on a, a busy street, which is uh, in the immediate neighborhood. It doesn't have a consistent or a, 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 any other um, uh, design features that this would be inconsistent with. Um, and finally, I think we made a recommendation that it would be uh, important to have the neighbors uh, agree that the, the design is uh, approved by them in advance. Of course, they have the option to testify in, in the end if they would like to. So, um, commissioners, did I miss anything? Uh, Okay, hearing no motion then. Um, did uh, we provide a, a feedback for you, uh, Gary and uh, the two owners, Frank and Doug? Thank yeah. you. Thank you, yes. All right, yeah, yeah. look forward to the next okay. application. Again, uh, we've talked about this. You have zoning, you have some issues about shared property and all that, which is, you'll, if you solve those, then of course we'll see you in a few weeks. Oh, right, great. Well, <laughs> thank, no. you. thank you very much. <laughs> well, you solved those. We'll see you when we see you. How about I put it that way? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Th thank you for your consideration. I mean, uh, and, and Gary, great job, obviously. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's time to go. <laughs> no, no, not quite for us. We have one more to go. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about the William Burtis House, 69 Prince Street. Oh, yeah, okay. hang out. Well, yeah, that sounds interesting. Huh? We'll watch that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Madeline, if you could promote. Um, so I see Melanie. Hello. And. Melanie, do you have somebody else with you? I do. We have Laura Houston with Preservation Maryland here as well. I see Great. her on the screen. Okay. Hi, Don't quite yet. There, I see Melanie now. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, th um, this is a pre application. Uh, you've been with us before. And I think, uh, as you've heard me explain, this is a courtesy uh, regarding a uh, future application. And nothing we should, we are saying tonight will. Uh, should be construed as approval or disapproval of a future application. So please acknowledge. Thank you very much. I do understand that. Okay, cool. All right. Tell us what you, thanks for, we, we've seen, we've seen a prior version and this is a, a new design. So tell us what you'd like us to know. Right, right. So um, I really appreciate the opportunity to present our progress on this. Um, I think as, uh, as you well know, there are many um, moving parts to City Dock and the different designs and um, one of the uh, things that I want to show and share with you here uh, today, uh, hopefully you received some preliminary drawings earlier this week. 
I, I, I think we, we have all received them to, okay. to let you know, and, and our commissioners are great about reviewing great. things before the meeting. So. Great. So please do we, present. we have added some notes. Um, I will present, uh, we've added some notes and I'm going to present them out of order because for this, I really want to begin with the end in mind. So with that, I will share my screen. Do you see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Great. So um, I, I hate to interrupt, but I, I think this is really um, thanks for starting here because this is going to be a, a major point of conversation. But I think we've all looked at them. But you, okay. I, I want to compliment you on your presentation because um, you presented current and then short term or phase one and then master plan. So I just wanted to confirm that we're going to be looking tonight at um, phase one and master plan. That is correct. Okay, I'm so you can choose to go, but I would say right now, um, phase one is important because that's what we can do deal with mm -hmm. in the, the first approvals. The master planning aspects have a lot of other moving parts. Mm -hmm. and I, I just would like that's my viewpoint um, as I'm, I'm sorry, I get to lead the conversation a little bit, but yeah. um, that being said, um, I think I just wanted the other commissioners to understand that we are, we're always going to have master plan and phase one. Right. And I will definitely uh, do my best to distinguish that um, okay. as we go forward. But uh, from, from, from my scope uh, with HD squared architects and preservation Maryland and the phase one, what we do and how we do it um, is going to impact everything subsequent to Bardis House, right? So yeah. that's why, again, we're going to begin with a schematic end in mind, many moving parts. We we did meet with Bryce Turner and his crew this, this week, so we've been consulting with them. Uh, that's why I want to show this section here, um, which is a future section, right? The end, the, the larger, bigger goal for resiliency for City Dock and Bardis House. And what, what I want to point out, because I know there's a lot of numbers that get, you know, tossed out, and hopefully this will provide a really uh, successful visual for those numbers. We've got the sea level rise along the right here. We've got the elevation markers. So we've got from, you know, sea level rise at zero um, to mean high water to the um, AE flood level at five feet. And of course, uh, two feet above that, free, the freeboard for seven feet for the city of Annapolis code. And then the proposed Bertus House 9.2 at nine feet, two inches and change um, shown here on the right. And then um, right here located is the existing 3.14 elevation um, that we have, we see Bertus House right now at this 3.14 um, and then Prince George Street at about one. Um, so these numbers can give you that visual. It does mean raising up Bertus House about six feet and that dimension is pointed out right here. Um, what, what we envision and what we hope happens is that Bertus House maintains its context and that in the future as city dock improvements and resiliency is uh, developed, that there are retaining walls established around Bertus House that allow some fill, that allow the front porch to come back to its original context that we experience right now. Um, and so that's what this shows in this section. The other reason I really wanted to show this section in on this left section, left portion of the section, um, this is the seven foot uh, above sea level indication that the addition, whatever that becomes, um, will have its main you know, entry level at seven feet, right? Minimum uh, due to the, the, the codes for uh, sea level rise. So what Bryce Turner's team and, and, and my team discussed this week is how that having the um, Burtis house on a platform, if you will, a new grade of seven feet um, with two and three steps up to the 9.2 allows um, uh, the Burtis house to be a little bit higher um, and more resilient over sea level, but it, but it also allows that addition to have a higher ceiling in its first main level. As you can see, um, well, you might not be able to see, but I'll tell you, this, okay. this is the current uh, acoustical ceiling tile that's in Berta's house that'll obviously be uh, removed at some point, but that's at eight feet. So uh, the Berta's house, of, of course, as a historic home is not, uh, does not have tall ceilings. It's, you know, it, it, 
it's going to be between eight and nine feet once they supplement the structure for assembly um, uh, use. So having the addition eventually at the seven feet provides a couple of more feet for them to have a taller um, first floor. Uh, we discussed the transition, obviously, there's going to be a transition um, at the first from the first floor of the addition to the first floor of Barta's house, but we have Bryce Turner's group has some ideas we shared and developed. So we don't think that's a problem at all. We think it's actually a plus to have a slight difference here. So that that's the main uh, point of this illustration and section. Um, also on this sheet above that is this is phase one. So here we go with phase one. At this point, again, we have on the right, all of the elevation markers indicating where we are in that uh, battle to get higher above sea level and above sustenance um, for the sinking. And you see the wet flood proof foundation walls. You see piers that the Burtis house is raised. So the porch is then raised on those piers. Um, on the next page, you have the sections in the cross direction. So this one shows the water here on the left. And then the, this, again, this is, this is the master plan version. So there would be um, up to eight foot above sea level. This would be a seawall. Um, this is the promenade level here. It is drawn um, at, a, at a level that was presented in September by the, the master team there. Um, it may go back down. I don't know, not in my purview, but it, what they are still talking about is an eight foot um, seawall here to the level of eight feet. Um, and then again, we discussed with Bryce's team, the benefits and um, design opportunities in filling uh, an area and a, and a courtyard, bringing that context back up on the side, the waterfront side of Burtis house in this area. Same with um, on the right here, a, a smaller version uh, where the property level allows um, so that people can actually walk around the entirety of Burtis House in, in the future goal. Um, but as we go up to the phase one, um, you see, of course, the promenade and the electrical panels and the, mm -hmm. the yard that we, you know, where he, we have right here and now. And you see this, the sea walls uh, here and the structure above. So uh, again, for those, the elevation markers are on the left in that particular section. So that's that's just to give the section and some context um, with the, you know, kind of the, the transition phase, phase one, and then what we envision and from what we're hearing um, the, the ultimate master plan would be. Um, the next images show these two um, situations. This is the master plan version. Here you, you can see a little bit, depending on how, how large your screen is, you can see there's just a wireframe indication of a future addition. This is very schematic. This is not um, just to show the difference, but this raised, raised you know, platform of seven feet, just to show where seven feet lands um, in the future master plan and then the site plan that's associated with that. Uh, since you've, you know, if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise I'll kind of zoom through because I know we want to get to the nitty gritty of, of the actual Bartis House elevations. Um, this, this also shows the renderings here from each of the four perspectives as you uh, top right, as you uh, come down Prince George Street, you see in the master plan, um, there's, you know, a brick wall that surrounds, brings Burtis House into context with its history. Um, depending on the development of uh, Prince George Street, if this remains parking um, or if it becomes a pocket park, and you know, there's a lot of different um, ideas floating out there uh, that, that may be raised up. You know, this, this wall right now in front of Burtis House is shown at about five or six feet. It would need a, it would need a railing. Um, but again, that's the future, that's the master plan. Um, so that's what these renderings illustrate. Um, the next site plan is now, uh, sorry, phase one, and this, this transition phase. So we have Burtis House there with the promenade and uh, raised on its new foundation. And then you see here an indication of the, the rear um, 
non-conforming, non-contributing um, portion that is proposed to be demolished. Mm -hmm. So that site plan, of course, has the existing parking lots and the existing par uh, park, Susan Campbell Park, and then the additions. Uh, sorry, I say the additions, but the uh, the non-contributing uh, portions of the house being removed. So that's the the larger context, and this, of course, are the these are the renderings supporting that and illustrating that. Um, again, from Prince George's Street in the top right with one stair um, accessing the front door, uh, main access for Virtus. Of course, during this phase, it would not have public access. It would just be um, you know, staff and critical um, access for maintenance and just keeping an eye on things. Um, so these, these are again, very schematic, um, just to show uh, in our modeling form, you know, how that would look. The next set of, of straight elevations show in the top left will be the, the, the demo elevation, the existing elevation with the demolished portion here shown the side porch on the left. And then this top right elevation shows phase one. So that's you know where we're talking now. Um, we, we have shown um, the Virtus house in, the, in these drawings right now, they're shown as the, the restored German siding. Um, I wanna, I just wanna reiterate that that is, that is very much budget dependent and, and not necessarily within the scope of phase one. Um, we're just trying to, again, you know, that's where, that's where Virtus is headed. Um, and so uh, we have showed the restored German siding um, on these front elevations here. And, um, and then of course the, the piers with the, I don't know, I, can you, if anybody wants me to kind of make it bigger there, it's a little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, and again, trying to keep those elevation markers there and easy to reference for people as they as we all kind of envision this new city dock that we're creating. And then down in the lower section is that future vision with the context and the, and the walls and the new sea walls that would of course be on the far left. So we have a sheet for each elevation. That's of course the Prince George Street. So this elevation is the rear facing um, the park, of course. And you see here on the left, the large white box that's being demolished. Um, that's those bathrooms and a really horrid addition. Um, we, what we've um, shown here for, again, was restored German siting. And this is where we really wanna have uh, your feedback, of course, and correspondence about what our options are for this section. Um, we don't necessarily want to um, spend a lot of time, money, and effort on this side, as we know in the future, it's going to have an addition that's going to be right up against it, probably, because they don't have a square inch to spare with all the programmatic things they're trying to stuff in that addition. So, um, I think even though we're showing the German siding, we've, uh, and Laura can speak more to this if she chooses, but we've talked about having some storyboard and some history. You know, is there a banner that we can put on, you know, in this section where it's, you know, we're demolishing it and we can just close it up and we can have some of the history of Bartis House illustrated there facing the park. Um, similarly, I'm just going to jump to the next one, would be where the side porch is being demolished. Um, th this is an existing door right uh, now. It may not be six panel and forgive me for a six panel door, but <laughs> I think that must be the default in the program. But um, in any case, or that, that's the door that's there now or something. But in any case, um, the, this is an existing opening from our historical records. We believe there's a window that's currently been covered up and hidden. And that's, we've shown that there for now, but our notes and our construction set would obviously, you know, it would be an investigation to have once we um, take off the side porch. This up here, if you're familiar with Bartis House, there's a this pair of windows up top. Those are not obviously um, original. So we would recommend just taking those out um, and, and repairing the siding over it. But this is another area where if the budget does not allow for restoring, you know, the siding um, that we think, you know, a building wrap um, and then facing the water as people come and dock, you know, you have an illustration of, of the activity in the future, both of, you know, the, 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 the past and the future for Bertus House, if you will. Um, and then kind of 
at this point, you know, this would be the future. This is the seven feet. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think this is the eight foot wall. Yeah, this is the eight foot wall. The seven foot is down here. So this is the eight foot seawall. It's not going to be brick, but um, the, eight, the height of the seawalls that they're, they're to, you know, future installation. And then the last sheet um, is just the alley view of it. And there's not really much happening there. That siding would probably stay as it is for now, unless we, the yeah, funding actually does come through to restore all the German siding. So um, that, I think some important factors that, I, that I've been keeping in mind as we you know, look at these elevations. Um, 20 years ago, uh, Hurricane Isabel put four feet of water in Berta's house. Um, that with, with an existing elevation of um, 3.14, that puts, you know, that water came in at over the seven feet that's now, you know, this, this current code. So um, it's really, you know, from an elevational standpoint, it's about risk tolerance and, and, and budget. Um, mm -hmm. But from a historical perspective, I don't, Laura, do you have anything to add? Because that's, that's, that's all I really yeah. wanted to convey. Um, and then really seek their input on uh, the commissioner's input on on what they what they think. Yeah, yeah not at this time. Feel free to add. Great, thank you. All right, great, thank you. Okay, well, um, thank you. Um, I appreciate all the, the detail, um, especially uh, personally. I appreciate all the detail, especially all the elevation lines on the left um, and the, the sequence. Um, so if I think um, if to just to craft the uh, discussion a, a bit, um, we should probably focus on um, first the demolition aspects because that's going to be a guideline that we have to have to always be considering. Um, and I, I frankly, I'll just cut to the chase. Don't think there are any issues there. None of this is contributing. And John, you can overrule me there if you want. Um, then. Um, then in phase one, um, the treatment of the building and um, the, the concepts of restoring windows um, and possibly restoring siding or leaving things blank. So that's phase one and possibly around the foundations. And then in the, uh, in the eventual master plan, I think we can have maybe a more general discussion. So sure. we, does, that, does that make sense to to uh to kind of focus on so so john um so demolition phase one and eventual planning well demolition phase one is is in keeping uh uh with returning the building to its original form um no arguments there certainly um certainly i do have uh concerns about uh, the possible, let's say, long-term appearance of an unfinished uh, uh, exposure of some element of the building that isn't congruent with uh, adjacent materials. Um, I do think we're trying to honor this structure um, and preserve it and uh, uh, I don't know what the phasing is for funding. Uh, so um, in terms of how those voids are going to be treated, I'm, I, have, I have concerns, uh, and, and especially from, from the standpoint of maintenance, uh, because um, even though the uh, building's ownership has, has changed, uh, there are a lot of different uh, activities that are going to have to occur to even make uh, this building, uh, let's say, uh, one that you could enter. So, um, <laughs> it's gonna be a, <laughs> right, gonna right be now a you money. can't enter it. Yeah, actually, could I ask a question? And I'm not sure anyone can answer this, but what we're talking about in phase one is possibly two to three years of this building standing as a monument almost. Um, as opposed to a usable structure. I Is think that... realistically, that's probably accurate. I know that uh, we're moving to have our phase completed by the summer of next year of 2023. Okay. 
that would allow the city to pick up the subsequent phasing as they're doing wider work throughout the city dock, which August 2023 is their start date goal for yeah. that as well. Yeah. And NPS um, has been very involved in uh, this project because they're interested in headquartering uh, their Chesapeake office here. They provided funding for the phase one. Uh, and I know that they're eager to see this continually progressing. So mm -hmm. they may be able to help that move more quickly than the two to three year span. But um, yeah. I, I think before significant work and completion of an addition is done, yeah, you're, you're looking at um, yeah. a couple of years potentially. Yeah, I'm not crazy about the term mothballing, but that is exactly what we are talking about here. We're gonna protect what we have for a period of time that is relatively unknown and um, I just want to make sure the other commissioners, I think everyone knows that, but and I think John's point is how do we deal with it during this two to three years and maybe he's drawing our attention to the, do we, do we spend extra money to put the German siding, for instance, on, on this facade we're looking at right here, uh, or do we um, do something simpler and maybe advertise the fact that this is a work in progress and that's a tough choice. Well, you could certainly uh, consider putting some interesting history on uh, the, the- Of course. That faces city dock. Yeah. Because it's, Berta's house right now uh, isn't something that one could identify as uh, a waterman's house. Not from the city dock side, no. Right. If if I can speak to that, so I mean, our preference would be to be able to restore that siding in this phase one if okay. you know if funding will allow us to do that so that it looks a little more appealing. Um, but there will, you know, the, the plan is to have a, a fairly tall fence surrounding the property that will have interpretive material um, research on Burtis. Uh, himself on, um, you know, water, Mormon heritage on Annapolis and yeah. on plans for the structure. So that would provide some, um, something perhaps more attractive and cover up some of what would be visible to the public. Uh, but as far as, you know, we, as far as the mothballing, which we're kind of shifting away from, uh, you know, calling it that, but that is, that's kind of, that's what we're doing here. Um, input on uh, at least visually what may be appropriate and feasible yeah. is, is absolutely welcome in the event that restoring the siding is not um, possible. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, of course, the uh, the other issue, and I'm I just want to announce I may have a technical problem coming up, and it's saying 12, 11, 10. Um, <laughs> It, and there's not much I can do about it. I'll change, I'll change devices, but uh, uh, the, the height is something. That... Nope, there he goes. Yep. There he goes. Okay. Yeah, we can talk a little bit. I, he, he launched into the height there. And um, I, um, I so, so I'll just maybe state something that I think I heard you say, and then we can have a further discussion among other commissioners. I think what you're telling us is that the, the, the new, the, and I, I'm thankful that you talked to Bryce um, and, and you understand their baseline level and you're gonna show these uh, light levels on each drawing. They're at seven, what we now call seven feet. Um, you're proposing, um, can you hear me okay? I'm, no, I'm good. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, you're proposing effectively to raise above what would be the normal like to preserve what would normally look like this building. Uh, it would have uh, a, a, a basement, not a basement, but a, a two or three courses of stone or brick to raise it up. So you're proposing that. Yes. Okay. So again, I think uh, I'll state, I think that's that's what I'm hearing. So the total height of the building actually will be higher because of those two feet, but it, it actually preserves the relationship between the plane and the ground and the and the um, and the ground floor. Exactly, exactly. And I think Laura's point about the fence. I mean, I know yeah. that the you know we don't 
want a lot of investment into the the wall, you know, the foundation um, that's eventually going to be built against. Um, and so, you know, having having it um, wrapped, you know, with this fence or yes. you know, the visual blocks with the history. And uh, I mean, Laura, the University of Maryland is helping with that, right? There's some some students. Maybe you could talk a little bit about who's going to who's 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 kind of kind of leading that artistic effort there I, I, in the uh, fall, I think. Yeah, so um, there's this, uh, the Historic Preservation Studio at UMD is um, taking on Virtus Research as sort of their semester project, and we'll be collecting research on various topics that, uh, you know, I mentioned, and um, finding, you know, graphics and photographs, historic photographs and that sort of thing, yeah. and, and, and kind of um, providing a, a condensed version of their research that we would then hand over to a graphic yeah. artist to then, uh, you know, arrange and fabricate. Um, and, and that's, uh, we would also use, um, you know, anything that archeologists can provide any, any yeah, information. Archeology is going to be extremely important. Yeah. Um, I'm again, I'm, I'm going to let the other commissioners speak, but these things are popping in. I think we have multiple applications actually emerging here. Um, I think you want, will want to do exactly what you're doing here and let us understand phase one. Um, what you're starting to talk about is art projects and murals and interpretate, interpretive stuff, which I think that for simplification purposes, you're going to want to have a separate application um, because effectively we're talking about, we, we deal with murals and interpretive signage all the time. It's, I think just for your own sanity. Absolutely. Uh, I, I love all that. It all makes sense to us. There is a wealth of resources, uh, of course, in Annapolis with historians about this building. It's so what I would at this point from a pre-app point of view say, okay, let's focus on the first application and, Interpretive signage might be, a, a, you know, a, another wonderful application. But all right, I see John's back. Yes. Oh, John's back. John's back. Yeah. And yeah, I decided to use my laptop for uh, this meeting, and uh, it, it's given me challenges. Anyway, um, well, John, we covered just so you know. I think you were headed towards the height discussion, and a, a quick summary for you. Um, we understand the new seven level, uh, seven foot level, and this proposal actually says the ground floor should raise above that um, to preserve the, the original form of the building, and therefore the total height goes up. But it on the streetscape preserves something that might have looked more like the building. Well, I I don't uh, I don't want to uh, accept the nine foot height. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Simply because it it changes uh, uh, the building's perspective from uh, the street, but then on the other hand, uh, it's simply a pragmatic matter. Yeah. Uh, it, this this is going to be done once, uh, maybe again in fifty years. Uh, we want to we want to be ready for the future. Um, there are examples of uh, buildings with. Uh, large foundations and elevated first floors all over the city. Um, the difference here is that this uh, this elevated foundation is completely utilitarian. It doesn't have any fenestration. Uh, there's no articulation. Um, yeah. It's it's a uh, it's a utility base. And um, yeah, I wish if the budget would allow that there could be some articulation or expression. Again, I'm going to let the other commissioner speak. <laughs> I, I do think that there's an opportunity to articulate not just a concrete CMU block wall um, and articulate it in the short term. Yeah, Tim, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll speak up. I'm concerned yeah. about the view from the Prince George Street side. Um, I do have a couple clarifying questions. Um, does this extend into the sidewalk there or is the sidewalk in front of the porch in addition to where those pillars are? And I'm just looking at phase one because it looks like the master plan version 
completely guts the sidewalk. So I'm curious about that. Um, so the sidewalk um, in front of, sorry, on, on Prince George Street? Yes. Yeah, I'm mostly concerned with the Prince George Street view. Yeah, this, um, this is actually more of an interpretive site plan and not our civil plan. Hold on just a sec. Um, So can you see this? Sometimes when I changed images, it did it change to a different site plan? It did. Yes. Okay. All right. So this is the actual civil site plan. Um, so it we are proposing that it come beyond and take over the sidewalk. And that's that's what's shown now, yes. Um, again, we've heard a variety of different um ideas about what would happen with Prince George Street. Um, and Bruce talked a bit about the, the pocket park. So, I mean, obviously that can't happen unless, um, you know, that becomes available, that, that area becomes available. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, I don't see how that's gonna work from like a massing perspective to have an eight foot wall overwhelming the sidewalk. Um, so it, it would be about five or six feet, um, but but yes, it's a it's a you know it's a large wall. Um, you know, there's an eight foot wall. The seawall on the water side, the the new walls are going to be eight mm -hmm. feet or to the level of eight feet. Um, so uh, the Navy, uh, Zoe tells me, I mean that they're building a ten and a half foot wall down here in this area and along the way. Um, unfortunately, I think walls are in our future. Um, so that was another one of my clarifying questions is how this is going to work. So it looks like the phase one detail shows this as an open foundation because you're showing the vents there um, to let the water into the foundation when in a flooding event. That's a wet, yes, that's a um, FEMA wet flood proof wall system. Mm -hmm. So just to clarify then when you those openings would allow the water in intentionally. Is that the purpose of that? That is correct. Okay. And then on the master plan version, you see a solid wall built up with um, filled in on that side. So are those walls being phase one walls being built with the intention of that wall being filled in and creating that pressure on those walls that that is the discussions we've had with our structural engineer. Um, we, we don't know for sure what's going to happen in the future with the master plan, but we will make sure that our walls can, can do that, um, can sustain that. And that's our discussion with our structural engineer, yes. Okay, so I'm not sure how much to talk about the master plan version because that one completely subsumes the, the sidewalk right. and creates a massive wall against a terrible fence on the other side um, <laughs> to create really, really terrible streetscape for a waterfront, for very historic waterfront um, location on the city where they're trying to create the um, ferry as well. This, the mayor's trying to put a ferry there too. So I don't see how that's a very inviting uh, solution. So I, I mean, I think that's that is a master plan discussion, right? I mean, um, when when we were working with uh, Bryce and his team, and, and they were talking about their eight foot wall, um, I'm I I can't really respond to that part of it. Um, so, but even the phase one, right? If we're just talking about phase one, mm -hmm. that um, that massing from the street, you're going to be looking straight up at the Burtis house and looking underneath the porch. So I'm not sure how to how to manage that and raise it and um, just where the seawall is actually going to be, if it's going to be if the Burtis house is inside of the seawall or if it is part of the seawall or if it's outside the seawall. That's what I'm trying to understand. Mm -hmm. So the Burtis house is, is past is uh, not part of the seawall. 
Uh, there will be some distance um, because there is some side yard of the Burtis house and that property before you get to the um, uh, promenade at where the seawall will be located. Yeah. Okay, so there's going to be a, a seven foot seawall and then behind that, you know, protected from by that seawall, the Burtis house will be at a nine foot of a first floor elevation raised from that seawall. Raised two feet higher than that seawall. Well, their seawall is at eight feet. So Burtis House, the, the steps to the porch are proposed to be um, at seven feet. So lower than that seawall, but then the finished floor elevation would be uh, just over a foot higher than that seawall, yes. That's gonna be some impressive engineering to get that seawall there, but still create access to the water. <laughs> yeah, um, you're right. Um, there's a lot to work through. We did, can, can we I ask did see, we, we can confirm at least one joint meeting between the HPC and the Planning Commission that did show a concept of a street and park at Prince George Street um, at a higher level. So Kevin, I, if I'm hearing you, that's your concern is what is the whole street and park gonna look like and how do you access the water uh, and, and view the water from Prince George Street? Yeah, right? and then just looking at the Burtis House, if, if Prince George Street stays at a one foot elevation and the first floor of the Burtis House is at yeah. nine foot elevation. It's gonna be massive. Right. Um, I think in phase one, that's probably what, um, again, I think that's what we're gonna be facing for th two to three years. And then hopefully the master plan will kick in and we'll see a public space at the end of Prince George Street losing DNR parking. Um, but that's the, I think that's the intent. Um, but we're, as long as the applicant, this particular applicant is continue to be committed to work with the city doc folks, we can only hope for the best, I guess. We're trying. <laughs> yeah. The city owns this building, to be honest. So uh, there's no reason that shouldn't be a reasonable expectation. Yeah. Tim, I, I'll be honest, from where I'm sitting, I mean, this is a great presentation. I understand why they're doing what they're doing and why they need to do it. But I'm because we don't have a lot of the rest of the picture, you know, we, we've got bits and pieces of what they want to do at City Doc, but we don't have any kind of a big picture. I'm really struggling to see how this is going to sit. I mean, to me, it's just a big structure by itself. And, and that's all it can be at this point, because nothing else has been fleshed out. But I'm really struggling to understand how all the pieces are going to fit together. And I, I mean, it's not like they can give us those pieces because they, they don't exist yet. You know, and, you know, I'm when, I, when we looked at the, when we had the meeting with the planning commission, I was one of the people that said, I was really concerned about both the Prince George's street streetscape and the dock street streetscape that there was a potential addition going on Burtis house that was gonna really obstruct the dock street view to the water, you know? And, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm like I said, I'm struggling to see how all of this is gonna fit together and, you know. <laughs> Well, it, Bobby, those are those are valid points, and uh, there's no there's no final uh, uh, design for City Dock yet. And and yeah, and that's and that's you know, I'm, it's not like these ladies have done a great presentation, and it's not like they can give us those pieces because they don't exist yet. Well, no. it, you can only work with the, uh, yeah. the preliminary designs at at this point, yeah. um, and I'm familiar with them, and it's still. I'm pretty good at visualizing, but uh, uh, this is right now, the Burtis house is the cheese standing alone. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Yeah. Right. Um, so I think, um, Bobby, you actually shifted our discussion to another point, which we'll, we'll just feed back just in summary. Uh, we have the Prince George's suit side, and then what might or might not happen on the city dock side. I, I think all we can say right now is 
um, we, we can see in this presentation for phase one, what might occur for a, from a building envelope, that's all we know. And from the master planning point of view, which we haven't even touched on it yet, um, we don't know what that building might or might not be. But I think if we want to move, I, I think we'll, uh, well, I think we would agree we want to support the, this project um, and from a preservation point of view and um, with this phase one application be feasible um, feasible in the first place toward the guidelines. And then secondly, we can encourage the applicant to provide testimony from other parties like the city and the CDAC to, to tell us more about how this phase one fits in in the short term and what their master plan is. And um, it, that's kind of what I, th I think we're trying to say. So, um, Tim, yeah. so, um, so just from the planning commission perspective with other projects that they've looked at since that topic came up, um, you know, we in the past, they have requested models of projects, you know, where they were very complex in order to have a better <laughs> idea of how all the pieces work together with major projects. And it just seemed to me in looking at the drawings with this, there is some information, you know, certainly on the site plan, you, there, ha you know, you're showing, you know, the, what the, Navy is doing with a nine point elevation and then Prince George's at one. Yeah. I mean, there's, there is some preliminary information. Perhaps there could be just a model built and that would have to be coordinated among the different groups that would just. Wow, what a concept. <laughs> address, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, address some, you know, because you, um, you know, in looking at the site plan, you see the elevated stage at eight, then the New yes, doc this, is, this, is, this information is, is somewhat new to us. That, on this right, point. so maybe this could be turned into something more three-dimensional that would be, because it would be for not just for you all, but also for the Planning Commission and other people yeah. who will be looking at this project. I mean, I think this is, as this moves forward through any kind of public hearing process for any one of the components, I think that there's going to be a lot of it of interest from a variety of people beyond, you know, you know, the planning commission and, and um, the HPC. I mean, I, and I'm just basic, I mean, the people who live on Prince George street, I mean, I think lower Prince George street, for example, you know, I know that, you know, it, it, it's just a thought that maybe that's something that could be, could yeah. be considered in terms of everybody understanding how it's all going to, as, as, as was just said, how the pieces are potentially going to fit together. Yeah. I, 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 would idea, say, I love the idea of modeling and that would make us all want to get together physically in a public hearing in a room. And then Tim could have <laughs> his dream meeting in city, and yes, he could have <laughs> yeah. his dream meeting in the city council chambers and everybody in the world that would come. It would be amazing, yes. Yes, um, it would be an amazing thing and Tim would be catering it. <laughs> um, I, but but to take that on um, for the applicant, and one thing that has been very successful in our prior applications um, is photographic mock-ups, um, a merger of existing photographs and Photoshop. So you might look at some of our other applications in the past where we, we have requested the streetscapes, um, which would be crazy on this one, but merging, so photographic renderings actually bring this to life. These are great axonometric drawings. Um, but from the street level, um, in your final application, um, mocking up with Photoshop is really helpful from a, a testimony, persuasive testimony point of view. And I think I'm not asking too much. I don't think I don't, the software is pretty common, I think. Well, with 3D printers, <laughs> modeling is not do so everything. bad these days either. <laughs> but yeah. So I mean, who has one of those? Oh, uh, teenage kids have them. The shops yeah. and high schools have them. They really are amazing. Um, but I, unfortunately, we're still stuck with pub, um, online meetings. Uh, I think we, as far as, you know, um, working with getting information from the city or getting city folk, the, the team to start thinking about what phase two really will be. We've yeah. got 
we've covered a lot of ground um, from the last meeting to this I one. I think so. You know, um, getting some some details in there, and and there may be still more ground that we can cover. Uh, certainly, we hope because we want to make sure that this phase one really preps for the next. But I do think that there's going to be a certain point that there's only so far we can go yeah. until a design phase is started for that. You know, the subsequent phases. We want to give you know every bit of information we can. Um, but I do expect that that can only be taken so far in this first phase. Uh, I, I personally understand that, concur with that, and I, other commissioners do. And I think, I think what we're facing here is this might be the building or project that establishes the new plane, the new plinth <laughs> for future buildings. Um, including the hotel, the potential hotel adjacent. So uh, any th I th that's my thinking. I, any, any other commissioners thinking of that way or not thinking that way? I'm, I'm certainly thinking that way. Then we kind of talked about that, I think last meeting we were talking about establishing a new grade plan. Yeah higher than what the current one is. Um, what this presentation has done is kind of said, this is where it has to be. We need to get to have a building built with the new flood requirements. If you were to do a new building, it has to be this high. Yeah. And that's just to get to floor level. Yeah. So if there was a new building built behind this, where we both well, going to be alleyway, but if it was a lot, its first floor would be nine foot above what the current road is, or eight foot, whatever. If they it was. choose to be two feet above the plinth, as I'm calling it a plinth. Or, yeah, yeah. Well, it is a plinth right now. It's yeah. It's supporting that um cherished relic. <laughs> so that's kind of the concept here. Is we're trying to preserve a cherished relic, and John says we so, need. To so it, it would on. be. It would be. So Prince George Street is at one right now and Dock Street is at four. So it would only be nine feet. Up. It would be it would be not as far above the existing well, Dock Street. One my, Dock my, Street, correct? Mm -hmm. My understanding is what was the um, restaurant there right now? Is it, um, Latitude. 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 That end piece, the newer section. The reason mm -hmm. that is so high is because it had to get above flood height yeah. for FEMA. Yeah. That's why it sets up. So mm -hmm. if you look mm -hmm. at that and say, there's nice our idea. first floor. Well, I, I think one of the takeaways too is that we have two views here. As, as Kevin was talking about, the Prince George Street view is going to be three, possibly three to four feet lower than already than the city doctor. So we got these two views in which do we honor most and how do we deal with both of them well if or do we merge them or do we merge them i think that's kind of what i'm hearing and and how do you even see the water from anywhere <laughs> well that's going to be an issue just with the flood controls the flood uh, controls yes of course where we have passive flood controls you're going to be behind something you're going to have to get up on top of it well in george street we raised the building let's raise the street So I will add that um, with the addition in our meeting with Bryce, the the addition portion where people would access and, and enter at Dock Street, the grade there would be raised to six and a half, and then mm. the building would be up at seven. Um, right. So that's a couple of feet, not 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 as dramatic as as Prince George's of yeah. Prince George Street, of course, but um, you know a couple less than three feet yeah. difference there. Um, yeah, but, well, integrating integrating with that design is going to be important because the drawing you're showing right now shows kind of like like a platform and then down yeah. and then back up again and hopefully that will get integrated in the future. So Dock Street would also be then be six and a half like Dock Street Park. Is that what you're saying? Um, yeah, Dock theoretically Street Park is six and a half. Yeah, yes, theoretically. Yeah, and again, these are six to eight inches and in, in feet. So I, I think with good landscape design, all of that probably can be managed. That is, and, and I've got the date. I mean, you can, um, 
see from the planning meeting uh, on 721 um, mm -hmm. is where we, we got these numbers right. and, and heights. So uh, not to say they, they won't change, but <laughs> at least at that point, um, that was the documentation we were provided. So I have just one more question. So the new, the proposed future edition wraps around two sides of the building. Is that, is that no. correct? No, that was that was an early schematic. If some of the the I think one of the very early uh, schematic designs that that Bryce showed had it on both sides of Gordas House, as a matter of fact, and we we put it there. the The latest design that we just saw this week, to be honest, um, doesn't have anything um, in front of Gordas House on the waterfront, uh, such as this shows, but it um, it does go out as planned south, if you will. Um, th they are being asked programmatically to add, you know, um, National Park Service, the Harbor Master, um, you know, I mean, the programmatic requirements, it, it, the building has grown from what I've seen and come out to the tree, you know, past, well, until, till where you see the word align yeah. here, mm -hmm. right now, the last I saw it, the building does come all the way out, um, to this, to this point. But mm -hmm. again, Bryce is in very early schematics and doesn't have all the programmatic information he needs to do it, what he needs to do either. So what will you be course, able that's to a different see? Application, the, right. different, so. different situation. Right. Sorry. Yeah, but what will you be able to see of the Burtis House if that addition is built on the Dock Street side of it? Well, we'll have to have that discussion when we right. see. Right. I mean, it's just something to to think about in terms yeah. of. Oh, well, there's uh, full there's, disclosure. There's going we, to be compromise here. Yeah. Well, also that's right. the next application, not this one. And to be honest, ten years ago we approved a building here, um, which. Oh, right. That's true. Yeah. So. Um, for the National Sailing Hall of Fame, which honored the Burtis House, but it didn't. I think we're actually more aware of the insignificance now than we were then, to be honest. So, okay. Um, so just, I have, just have one more comment. question, Tim. So the okay. addition for the Burtis House is not being built by the as part of the Burtis House project. It's being built as part of the City Dock project. That is my understanding. Okay. Okay. It's hard. To, so, you know, it, it gets complicated, I think, for all of us to understand the dynamics. No, yes, I, it does. It is. And, but I, that, that actually has been the case since pretty much the beginning. But you're right, right. Jack. It's not clear. The, this building will be preserved and mothballed and then interpreted with a grant, with several grants from National Park Service with the leadership okay. of Preservation Maryland. Um, but then there'll be a new building around it, um, which is another project. With funding from somewhere else, probably. <laughs> okay, I think did um, Kevin, you, did I hear you? Yeah, I was just gonna um, suggest that um, these uh, drawings are, are great and very helpful. If we could include some actual pictures and even mark up the pictures as to what you know where eight feet might be or where nine feet might be or where the new um, top of the house might be, those the pictures like that uh, tend to help with this review. Okay. Um, and then I do have an issue with on the, on this drawing where it says the waterfront view corridor. Um, just kind of implying that there is only one corridor there, which I don't agree with. Um, so anyway, just views of the water and this house will be seen from the water as well. So um, when you're point. pointing out the, the pictures, provide pictures from the water to see how it'll look before and after. Yeah, that is really important. Um, our guidelines for good reason um, involve views from the water as you mm -hmm. enter the city. Absolutely. In the harbor, and so in your final application, any appli any um, presentation should include a view from the water. Um, and, and rotate, and we have asked applicate in the in the past. You know, you just rotate your way around as you're coming in the harbor, just perspectives to this. And in fact, I think it will be helpful because the scale will 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 help. I think the whole project. Okay. 
Thanks, Kevin. That was a good point. It's literally our first guideline views from the water A1. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, thanks. That was a wide ranging discussion. Um, and so I'll, I'll quickly, uh, uh, quickly, quickly summarize. Um, we, the commissioners and applicant discussed the concept of demolition of certain components of this building, which does not raise any issues from um, historic significance point of view. Um, we focused on the phase one uh, design, um, which raises the building um, and uh, in the, and has specific details on each of the facades where, especially where material was removed. There was discussion back and forth about the siding material and the treatment of that. Um, we were, undecided, I think, whether it should be literal German siding or the, whether it should be something simpler. Um, so that will be your choice. I, I think we can have a further discussion, but we didn't recommend by one way or the other. That's kind of still a design choice for you. Um, um, I, I will say that um, any anything you do remove is it is in prior um, applications, if you're removing a window and replacing it with a blank area, leaving a, a, a blanks where those windows were, I think this has to do with the harbor side, especially as you enter where windows were, if you've just filled that window in and leave molding there, as opposed to just completely siding it over is a preferred approach. Um, Sorry, can I clarify that's even if it wasn't original to the building? Uh, well, no, you, you need to have some original reference to it. Don't, don't make anything up just to break it. This is a historic building. If it was a new building, we would, but it would need to have a reference to something that was removed. Okay. The, I'm sorry. So just to clarify, so the windows that we're proposing to remove uh, were probably added in uh, when uh, DNR did their renovation in the 80s. Okay. Is that, they, is that a window that we would need to? Now, if they have no significance from the original yeah, they, structure, then yeah, you okay. can do, you, you, well, it makes more sense to, yeah. If they okay. punched a hole in the wall and put a new window in, then that, that, no, I'm referring to any historic window. Okay, um, thank you for the clarification. Well, we're talking about windows. I'd like to, again, put in the record that we do not believe any of the windows in this structure are of historic significance. Is that accurate? No, I believe the I believe the Prince George Street are okay. Um, so those will need to be documented, and your your plan for hopeful rehabilitation of those windows will be important for the application. Um, I think we brought that up once before. Lot, yeah, that's not yeah. within this scope. <laughs> yeah, uh, window restoration is is not part of the phase one. That would be part of the fuller rehabilitation taking place in the phase two. All right, just as a sidebar then, what is the, during phase one, what is the plan for those historic windows? Main, maintenance? Uh, I presume, I don't know if that's something we address through how, you know, ensuring they're secured and, and uh, tight or if that will matter with uh, air passage or, um, I, you know, I guess we can, we're happy to get feedback on that, but. Um, yeah, it's actually not having to do with air passage. It's just whether they're de continuing to de deteriorate and um, fall apart. Um, we don't want them to further fall apart. So as a part of your application, you'll need to um, present your plan for maintaining those windows. It, there, if, if they're if they are historic, if they've been deemed to be historic, and that would be a normal request. That's nothing out of the ordinary. And uh, how many are those? Like nine, right? Um, windows have a real character defining. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's literal. It's again, it's mentioned in many many guidelines. Yeah, we got ten. Yeah. I, John, I don't, again, I'm doing a sidebar from my summary here, but we didn't talk about it. John, have you looked at these windows to determine 
yet. Whether... I haven't looked at them recently, but okay. I, I, the so, Prince the Prince George facade has uh, uh, significant windows. They're historically yeah. significant. What we yeah, and what we found is sometimes eight of them will be um, important, and two of them won't. I mean, in other words, some of them may remember. I haven't looked at them in, in that detail, yeah. but I, I certainly can can do so before uh, the next the next time. Uh, yeah, uh, there's another presentation. So a normal application would come with a window inventory, and so that's what we're requesting here: is a window inventory in your mm -hmm. plan during phase one, and hopefully forever, because the windows will hopefully go into the master plan as well. Um. There was discussion about a little more detail in phase one about the articulation about the, on the foundation. Is it just blank CMU wall? What is the material? How do you intend to paint it? Um, so more detail on, on this particular drawing we're looking at right here on the upper right hand side. Mm -hmm. um, um, we also um, recommended that in your application for phase one, that there be a additional um, streetscape photography mock-ups and uh, also from the water uh, mock-ups. Um, then in general, there was a discussion about the master plan. Um, actually two things. In the interim between the phase one and the master plan, there was a discussion about some art projects uh, or murals and interpretation around the foundation. And that might be a separate application between phase one and the master plan, which we'd be, we, we would welcome. And then finally, um, continued cooperation on the master plan to understand the end of Prince George's Street and the, the elevation of that park, because it will have a significant impact on this building. And if in your eventual applications, even in your phase one application, as we continue these discussions, if you can get testimony from somebody from the CDAC group in, in one of these meetings, that would also be helpful. I'm, I'm trying to ask for that from them too. So that's just my general plug. They're both city owned properties. Um, you, you've done, I, I, I appreciate the fact that you've taken the information you had from their presentation and incorporated it here. So that that's the spirit of what we're trying to do with, with this building. I think what you are trying to do with this building. We as a community are trying to do this. Yeah. You can hear me trying to write my own <laughs> summary. Uh, the summaries are appreciated actually. I'm, I've been in a lot of board meetings and, and commission meetings and and it's not always uh this one one of the unique things to believe through. sadly sadly in a way but i appreciate that chair i do okay well good we <laughs> thank you um yeah so did we uh, commissioners um anything any other major point or points that i should include in our summary that i missed okay um all right thank you um did we provide you with helpful feedback Good. Yes. All right. We look we forward to another presentation. Thanks. It was we're moving forward. I think. Thank you very much. Thank all you all. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right. If I can get back. All right. On our agenda. Um, we only have one more thing. Uh, what, any other business other than the one thing I would like to bring up? <laughs> Commissioners? Just, just do it, Tim. All right. Um, just cutting to the chase then. Um, I, I, I sent out a, a draft on um, the, the topic of the hotel. It, we're talking a lot of nights about this particular site. Um, uh, it was a, a, John had a chance to look at it. Um, did any of you else have a chance to look at it or did it not hit the send button? I didn't see it. I may have just missed yes, it. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, you hit it. I read it. I read it, Tim. Oh, good. Um, 
what are your thoughts? My, well, I'll introduce where I was coming from and then I really want your input. Um, I tried to keep it relatively short, but of course I got a little longer than I thought. But um, I, I thought, thought it was to the, the point, point, Tim. Okay, thanks. I agree. Okay, any, um, the, the background here is we talked about it uh, in our last meeting we're aware of this. It, it is. Um, I've been talking with Ellie Tierney um, and also with Karen Brown, and we talked. We've talked about it here. Um, it 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 is not um, on an agenda in the next four to six weeks. So to a certain extent, it is still working through the process. And Ellie, uh, I don't think she would argue she with me. She said kind of on the back burner. But I thought at this point we should put our our, our thoughts on 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 the record, and so that's what I was trying to do here. And um, I don't. Um, I, that's all. I mean, we're not. I'm not diving into the details. Um, I've had a chance to look at the proposed um, ordinance, which is in the details, uh, chapter and verse, and. Um, it, it's ready. I mean, honestly, it, it's ready, and um, it's just it's waiting. And so, I think at this point, um, if we put ourselves on record here, there are several. Um, our rationale is as follows, and I listed the four or five things. So, um, if, if you, I would like to know if I just don't want to be writing this for all of the commissioners, if you would like to edit it either add something to it or remove something for it. I would like to know that before I go ahead and send it to, to the city council. I, Tim, I, did you, go ahead, sorry. No, no, sorry. Well, did um, you see Will's response? I haven't since we've been talking, yeah. okay, let me see. It was, it, John, it was earlier in the, the day. day. Yeah, it's... Um... Okay. Doesn't want to state that we're all in agreement. Okay, yeah, all right. So, I, I, okay, now I'm reading it. Um, I see Bobby saying enthusiastic. I, so, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm concerned about us putting ourselves on the record as being pro, so pro de redevelopment. Okay. I just, you know, I just don't want to get in, getting on the record of, of potential you know, support when we don't know what may be coming down the pike. That's all. Okay. I get that. It's not in our sandbox. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, you know, we understand that we understand the property owners have contacted the city and are interested in changing the height district, you know, and then, you know, we could just say our, our opinion, I, I forget where it is. It is a position of the commission that any new project must be based within the current height guidelines, our position is based on the following. That all I, I wholeheartedly agree with. I just, you know, the fact that we we agree that redeveloping is a priority and that we enthusiastically support the change, I just worry that's going to get us in trouble. Okay, I, I hear what you're saying. It's not in our sandbox. That's possibly me saying, <clears throat> and again, this is what I appreciate. That's me saying we all, I understand that we want to reactivate this space, but that's not the HPC, that's not the commission's job. So I'll take that sentence out. Well, well actually, Tim, you, you put the qualifier there. We want we uh, want to see the space reactivated, but that's not the commission's purview. Okay, I can simplify the statement. Right? How does that sound, Bobby? I mean, it, I mean, that's uh, so we're not. Where totally we understand the need, or we understand the concept. Yeah, 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 yeah. As long as yeah, that's that's. We understand that, the concept. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Or reactivate it doesn't necessarily mean redeveloped. Yeah, I got, I got. No, are we talking about the potential hotel space, or are we talking about all of City Dock? Um, uh, in, in particular, I'm only in this where where I'm proposing. Um, I'm only talking about these this these parcels. Okay. Because I'll be honest. I haven't formed an opinion yet to whether I you know, where I sit on the different options and even redeveloping it at all. So I don't have okay. enough information. So I haven't, and this is just Excellent. me, this is just one opinion. You know, I'm still, 
I'm still sitting back and watching and learning and listening. So excellent. I mean, right. I do wholeheartedly support our position on this on the on the height and the um, you know the the position that we're taking. I, I wholeheartedly believe that that's the right one, and I I think that we need to. I agree that now is the time to send a letter and, and get our, okay. our our position out there that we want to be a vital part of any any uh, changes going forward and want to be part of the, the discussion as early as possible. Okay. So, so Tim, I, I would just like to say about the history of the property. So I've worked for the city so long that I was actually working for the city when the addition was built. And that used to be like, you know, one of the most popular active places in the entire city to go. And, you know, it's had, unfortunately, some unfortunate owners who were not able to engage yeah. people in continuing to go there. But if all of City Dock is, is redeveloped around it, how do we know that it won't just be with some remodeling become something like chop perfectly chop good tank. i mean if i'm just giving you a different yeah that's a really good point i'm not yeah i'm all so, the, I was probably I, I guess what we're all assuming is this everything there will be demolished and something new will be built and that that's probably not what we are we should i shouldn't assume that yeah i mean because well, what if we had an owner there who said he can't wait for you know we you know we we just want to have a new chop tank i mean we have mm -hmm. two new very large restaurants that have been done in Annapolis and their renovations, the bank, you know, the El Aqua at the top of Maine, where they've converted that bank yeah. and, you know, a huge investment in doing that and making it a viable space yeah. without it becoming, you know, so there are, I mean, you know, it's but, just a thought. But you're, no, responding, I, I, you're responding to uh, uh, pending legislation, possible pending legislation. <laughs> so that's uh, that, well, I understand I, that, John, but that, you know, I mean, I think that, you know, that, yes, I understand that you have a current owner who has, has idea about, you know, but that it does, it's like, it's not like that's the only possible option in the entire world for making that a vital active space, I guess. Yeah. This, yeah. It's a counterpoint. I, I really. It's a good one. It, it, thank uh, you. Thank I, you. I hear, I hear, I hear you were reinforcing a Commissioner Bobby saying, let's wait to see what the options are. Don't assume that it must be a, a hotel. Um, so I'll, I'll temper that, yeah. that language and send it back out. Um, thanks. Um, and then you can see the four or five points again. I'm on my different computer, but. Um, yeah. I, I reiterated, um, or I, I, I had four or five points um, that I, I cited of, of you know, I, I, again, it's not too long. I hope it's not too long. No. But, um, yeah. Will, did you have a, I'm looking at Will Scott. Okay, now I see Will's comments, Will Scott's comments, which I will. So he's saying thank you for um, doing this. Uh, he's just saying that, again, I should not be, we should say the majority of the commissioners as opposed to all of the commissioners. I guess, and I think that I should always be saying anytime I send something from the commissioners, I don't want to always assume um, that all of us are saying the same thing because we all might have different takes on it. So I will um, take his uh, uh, words uh, to heart there too. Um, so my my going back, I I, I thought that our, our current guidelines have helped us. Um, the height. It, it, in the legislation proposal, the whereas statements talk about only adding seven feet. Well, it isn't only adding seven feet. The height actually increases quite a bit more because of other issues. Um, I, um, I, I raise the issue that it will it sets a precedent and possible lawsuits if you don't grant other people um, this um, waiver or change is an issue. 
And then the city doc action committee specifically referred to this as um, a topic that we shouldn't be changing. So those are the four major yeah. points. Um, nope, all good ones. Okay, okay. And finally, I just had a technicality, the floor area ratio uh, and it enables mass. So I, I threw that in there. Okay. All right. I will modify this. Um, and again, the final thing is that um, we would like, of course, this to be referred to HPC for review and comment. The, the process, when it gets to the, the, the point, um, of course, there'll be public input at the city council meeting on this change too. So we would, we would expect mul multiple opportunities for the public to testify on, on this change. All right, um, I'll modify it. Take some, uh, based on what we said just now, I'll send it out tomorrow. And then um, uh, we'll, we'll, bump, we'll bump along um, a little bit more. And um, I haven't had any more contact with anyone other than what we talked about two weeks ago or a week and a half ago. Yeah, sounds good. All right, any feedback anyone hears about, let me know. <laughs> All right, um, any other business? Okay, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? All right, thanks everyone.